Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a quick little video um, as I get ready to go on vacation. Um, everybody knows that if you're a book reader, it is one of the great joys and also <laughs> problems in life when you're going on vacation and you have to pick out what books that you want, you want to take with you. And luckily this time I don't have a weight limitation issue because we are driving. Um, we're driving to Washington DC from our home in Maine. So I won't have to worry about like limiting the number of books that I take with me because I'm flying and therefore I can't have too much weight. But, I mean, you can't take everything that you might want to read with you when you go on vacation. So it's always, you know, it's it's pleasure, pain mixed together um, to try to figure out what you want to take with you on vacation. So I just thought I'd go uh, show you these few books that I've chosen to take with me and uh, talk a little bit about why I picked them and um, just in general talk about reading on vacation. So the first thing I'll be taking with me is the book that I'm buddy reading with Patrice, and that's Five Presidents by Clint Hill. This is um, a memoir by a Secret Service officer who served um, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, and Ford. Um, and Patrice and I are reading this sort of, it's broken up into sections based on the different presidents. And we've already read the Eisenhower section, and this week we are reading the Kennedy section and so on and so forth. So I'll be bringing this with me and it's very appropriate since I'm going to Washington DC that I'm reading um, a book about a secret service officer that worked for um, five different US presidents. The other thing I'm gonna be bringing with me is my next Women's Prize for Fiction long list book. Um, this is Elmet. I borrowed this from the library. Uh, I got it through Interlibrary Loan and it's due the day we come back from vacation. So I gotta take this with me and try to get it finished. Uh, the next thing I have here is uh, a book called Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. This is a pretty uh, popular book. It's been around for a while. It's It came out quite, quite a long time ago. Um, let's see when it was published. Yeah, it was published in 2010, I think. So um, it's been around a while. I've never read it. And uh, the last year my husband and I had to drive to North Carolina from Maine. Um, and during that trip, I read aloud to him the nonfiction book, The Stranger in the Woods, and that was very successful. That was the first time that I, in our history of marriage, and we've been married for well over 20 years, um, that I had ever read a book out loud to him, and we very much enjoyed that experience. So this time on the trip, we're going to be reading Unbroken. Well, I'm going to be reading it to him, and this time it's not just going to be my husband and I, but also my 16 year old daughter is going with us so she may or may not listen as I read this um, on the drive down to DC and back from DC uh, back to Maine from DC but hopefully we will both enjoy this uh, nonfiction book about um, Louis Zamperini who was um, an Olympian and then in World War II he was an airman and then he uh, he was captured by the Japanese and, um, yeah, I think he was captured by the Japanese. I know he crashed his airplane and then he had to survive on a raft. Maybe he wasn't captured. I can't remember. But anyway, it's like an adventure, um, survival story. I think it will be a good, um, good thing to keep us occupied on the long drive down to DC, which will probably take us somewhere between 14 to 16 hours to make that trip, depending on traffic and all that stuff. The other couple of things that I have with me are things that I don't know if I will get to or not, but I'm taking them so that I can have some options to choose from. The first thing is a short story collection, Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Again, this has been around um, a lot on BookTube and it was, um, I think it was up for the National Book Award. Uh, doesn't say on here, but I, I think it was the National Book Award that this one was up for. And these are short stories that um, are supposed to kind of be a mixture of fabulous and realist and lots of uh, feminist type topics. And I'm really interested in it. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people really love it. Some people couldn't get into it at all. So we shall see what I think about. But the nice thing about a short story collection um, is that you can dip in and out and you know if one story doesn't appeal you can just move on to the other one so I thought that would be a good choice for a vacation 
The other thing that I'm going to take with me and may or may not get to is this nonfiction book called Pandemic by Sonia Shah. And um, this book has been on my radar for a few years now. And this talks about how um, epidemic diseases sort of start and spread and how they operate. It talks about cholera and Ebola um, and different types of contagions, basically how how they spread and how they are tracked and all that kind of stuff. And I think, I'm trying to remember where I first heard about this. I think I first heard about heard about it on the podcast The Librarian is In, the New York Public Libraries um, podcast about books and culture. Um, and one of the hosts, Gwen, uh, sits on a, a panel that reads nonfiction for a prize. I can't remember the prize now that she sits on the panel for. Um, but this book was one of the ones that was being judged for that prize list one year and she talked about it a lot and just sounded awesome. So that's another one that I may or may not pick up. Now if none of those books appeals, I'm also going to be bringing my trusty Kindle. I have the original um, Kindle way back when they first were sold so it's just black and white, it's not backlit. And it's perfect um, for sitting in the sunshine to read or for reading late at night when everybody else is asleep and I don't want to bother them with the overhead light being on. Um, the other thing I will be bringing is the latest issue of the Atlantic Monthly magazine. And I haven't, this is the, is this the, this is the April issue and I haven't even cracked it yet. So that will be good to dip in and out of as well because you know we're going to DC and there's tons of stuff to see and do but we also want to go we we aren't going with um, anything scheduled in mind we have a list of activities that we'd like to do and things that we'd like to see and but we also want to build in some free time for relaxation since it is you know vacation and we have had vacations in the past where you just go 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 the whole time and then you get home and you're more tired than you were before you left and we definitely don't want that to happen um we definitely want to have some downtime whether it's reading by the pool or or taking a nap in the afternoon or you know just building some relaxation into this trip um, this is my second time uh, going to DC and my husband and daughter this is their first time going to DC so all that to say that you probably won't be getting any videos from me um, in the next week this video I'm planning to put up on um, Thursday April the 12th and then probably won't be publishing another video until a week from that following Sunday so you know over a week between videos there and can't be helped because um, I don't want to have to deal with like filming a video and scheduling it and all that stuff. I'm pretty busy at work this week in the lead up to vacation as all of you can imagine I'm sure. Um, so that's the plan and that's where I'll be uh, if you're wondering how come no new video and hopefully I'm going to try to um, c capture some video while we're down in DC and and do a kind of a vlog type thing while we're down there to share that with you when, when I get back. And in the meantime, I hope you are all doing well. I hope that somebody somewhere is experiencing spring-like temperatures in North America because we are certainly not experiencing them here in Maine yet. So that's really sad and depressing. And I'm hoping, um, I know it's not supposed to be super warm in DC next week, but it'll be warmer than it is here. And so I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well and I will talk to you later.